We are recording. Hey everybody! Hey everyone! Paul Vanuk from Recording Magazine, and uh, in a uh, recent issue of our magazine, we reviewed the Gotham Diffuser from GIK Acoustics. GIK are based in Atlanta, Georgia. My GIK story starts about ten years ago, um, and uh, when I decided to treat my room, and I wrote a, a, a fade out for Recording Magazine, uh, essentially called "Treat Your Room Stupid." And the story typically for any room treatment goes something like this. You go onto one of the great gear forums and somebody comes up and says, hey, I've just saved up X number of dollars. I'm looking to buy my next microphone, my next set of speakers, uh, a compressor. And there's always that one guy that kind of comes on the forum and says, is your room treated? And everybody goes, oh, no, no, my room's fine. It's great. It's it's no problem. I'm, I'm mixing close to my monitors. And they somebody goes, yeah, but you know, you should really take that money and treat your room. Well, through trial and error, I learned that you should treat your room. And then <clears throat> I am now that guy on the forums that when anybody talks about buying gear, I'm going to tell you the first thing you should do and the most important thing you should do is treat your room. Uh, in my journey, when I was doing that, I, I decided to do what most people do, which is go the DIY route and build everything myself. But once I did the research, figured out um, what it was going to cost and the time commitment it was going to take and the trial and error of building my own panels, I decided uh, even though it was a couple hundred dollars more to uh, go with a professionally pre-built product, I decided that that actually made more sense for time. So I chose GIK products about a decade ago. And since then, I've kind of started to grow with the products as I've learned more about my room and as time and money permits. The cool thing is, is recently, uh, John Dykstra here. Say hello, John. Hi. <laughs> uh, John got doing? hired by GIK, and it's pretty cool because he lives here uh, in Wisconsin, pretty close to my studio. So I said, you know, instead of me trying to bumble my way through describing these products, I'd get John to come out and tell us all about uh, some of the GIK products and uh, the various room treatment that I have in my room and what they're doing for my room, what they can do for your room, and et cetera. So I'm going to turn it over to John. We're going to look at some of the things around the room and uh, go from there. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, so this is the GIK Gotham. This is actually an array of four of them together. Um, what we have going on here is one of the more complex uh, diffusion strategies that there are. It's, it's critical to know that sound, when it hits a surface, depending on the size of that surface, it's going to be a stronger signal that comes back at you. So if you've got a flat wall here instead of this diffusion that's coming at the back of your head when you're mixing, that specular reflection is going to be incredibly strong. Uh, one way to treat that is with absorption. Um, but when you can get to a design that incorporates some diffusion, uh, what you find is that you're going to get some room cues. Uh, you're going to get a more sense of space that allows your brain to be in a place of rest while you're mixing. Um, people that will, will generally fill their whole room with absorption are going to find that this sort of coffin type feeling, their brain is not in a place where they're able to focus on the speakers that are all the way up there because there's no room cues. It just doesn't sound right. So because this reflection is rather weak compared to a, a, a flat wall, uh, it's going to give you those cues and not be destructive to the audio path. We've got a lot of different depths going on here and very small surface areas. So this reflection is going to be quite dampened compared to a flat wall, but not as dampened as one of these. So it, it's a good way to add some life back into the room. Let's move on to uh, bass traps. I know GIK offers a, a number of different bass trap choices. Um, we can talk about the ones that I have in my room and, and, and uh, you know, John, feel free to add in your opinions of some of the others and you know what is bass trapping why do you need bass trapping and why are there so many different kinds of bass traps <laughs> uh so yeah bass trapping uh solid foundation for every acoustic design it is absolutely where you need to start um, the obvious effect of bass trapping is that it's going to tighten up your bass response it's going to clear all that one note bass stuff that you're getting in your mix what's a little bit more a side effect of it that most people don't realize is that because bass resonates over time, 
it's also masking the top end of your mix because that note should have been gone milliseconds ago, but you're still hearing it. Uh, you're getting this clouded stereo field left over by the bass that's still there that shouldn't be there any longer. Um, so the common strategy and the best strategy to start with is to put bass traps in the corners, to put bass trapping on the back wall, and also get some bass trapping up behind your speakers. Uh, Paul here has GIK's monster traps on his back walls, and he's got the 244 traps in his corners. It's a great strategy for bass trapping, absolutely. It's a good way to start. The monster trap has six inches of fiber built into it, and then a one and a half inch air gap at the back, whereas the 244 has four inches of fiber and a one and a half inch air gap at the back. Uh, we also have sort of a super chunk model tri-trap, which is going to basically fill out the corner in a triangular fashion. Uh, and then we also have our soffit trap. Uh, that's going to be my favorite product that we sell. Uh, those are 17 by 17 inches square, and then they stand at about four foot tall. Um, again, the thicker you can get with a bass trap, the lower the frequency you're going to affect with that particular product. The next most common thing, or the first thing I started with, um, and I use them for clouds on my ceiling, as well as at my first and secondary reflection points, were uh, the 242 panels, which are broadband absorbers. So what's the difference between a broadband absorber and a bass trap? So our 242 panel is a two inch uh, of fiber over a one and a half inch air gap. It's a broadband absorber. All bass traps of this type really are broadband absorbers. It's just a difference of how thick is the fiber that's taking care of the reflection. The thicker the fiber, the deeper the reflection that that particular panel is going to mitigate. Um, so it's very common to use 242s on the side panels like you have here and also over the top whenever it's possible. Uh, you want to go as thick as you can with every treatment that you can to get rid of as much of the frequency content of that particular reflection as you can. But that's not always possible. Like on the back of your door over here, if you were to have a monster trap on there, you wouldn't be able to open the door and get in the room, right? So we, we can't put them everywhere. If you were to have monster traps on your ceiling, they'd be down another four inches from where they currently are. So it's just not feasible. Um, generally speaking, if you could get it there, the monster trap would be amazing as a cloud because it's just going to mitigate just much that that much more of the frequency content of the reflection that's coming off of that ceiling surface. The, uh, the, the last thing I want to talk about that I have in my room is GIK's impressions panels, which is essentially uh, an, an absorption panel, but also uses a scatter plate, but it's one that's now on the outside. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, the impressions panels or even the traditional panels that uh, GIK makes that have scatter plates inside. What's a scatter plate? What's it do other than looking really cool? Absolutely. Uh, so Paul, what you've got here is the mod square impression in the four inch thick variety. Um, all of our impression and alpha panels, alpha is another line that's very similar to the impression. Uh, they're available in two inch, four inch, six inch thicknesses. What's happening here is a certain amount of the high frequency content that's coming in contact with this panel is going to come back at you. Um, it's relatively small and it's definitely high in frequency, but it's also not damaging. Um, that's the key point to, to point out here is that reflections that are going to come off a panel that has one of these scatter plates in it, it's not damaging to the audio content, but it is giving you a sense of life in your room. Like when I walk in this room, it sounds controlled to me, but it doesn't sound dead. Um, the impression panels are a big part of that. All of our 242, 224 panels, uh, monster panels, they can all be installed with a scatter plate that goes under the fabric, so that would be an option. Like if this look is too busy for you for one reason or another, and you 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 want the plain fabric, we we've got a we've got an app for that. I've been in tons of rooms where people take foam, and I'm not even talking foam from like reputable room treatment companies, but I mean they go to like a a fabric store and they buy like the little egg crate foam and just shove it on the walls. What do you think of that? You know, when people treat their rooms with foam, 
they're going to tell you that they hear a difference. And, and they're not wrong. You know, you, you definitely do hear a difference. It does sound deader in there. Uh, but it's really only affecting the high frequencies. But if you're doing just that and you're not addressing the lower frequencies in the room, you're going to end up with a room that sounds pretty dead, but also quite boomy. Um, so it's really important to get some thicker treatments in the room to, to mitigate the base issues and then sprinkle in some foam on top if you absolutely have to. So I want to thank uh, John for coming out to my studio here. Absolutely. And uh, walking us through all the various products and um, room treatment. Beautiful room. room treat Thanks, man. Uh, room treatment options. And uh, if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you stop by our website, recordingmag.com, for the best in all things recording. If you're thinking about treating your room, stop by, uh, is it gikacoustics.com or gikacoustics.com? gikacoustics.com. I'll put that at the bottom. And uh, be sure to check out the magazine and check out our review of the, uh, the Gotham. We'll see you soon.